This is a story about AI and people working together in a new digitized environment to achieve previously unattainable levels of productivity and efficiency. And I've got two great guests that I want you to meet. The first is Cam Bedbrat. Cam is the partner director of product management for Microsoft Azure. He's coming up on 25 years of Microsoft, uh, where he's worked on graphics and AI across a whole bunch of product offerings, Windows, et cetera. Um, and with him, we have Josh Dreen. Josh is a Web3 advisor at the Harvard Innovation Labs, co-founder of the Work3 Institute, and co-author of Employment is Dead, to be published by Harvard Business Press next year. Josh has worked with hundreds of organizations to develop Web 3.0 strategies and to transform and to transition smoothly to the metaverse. So please, Josh and Cam, join us here. Okay, it's great to have you both here. We're going to talk AI and people in the industrial metaverse. So Josh, let's start. We have talked about the technologies of the industrial metaverse, but we haven't really talked about people. Mm -hmm. um, so except the need for a good meal. Um, uh, but talk to me about how physical humans interact with the digital world and how humans interact with each other in the digital world. Yeah, I feel like we are in for a lot of transformation when it comes to that. Just like the internet transformed communication, the metaverse is going to transform the way that we interact with each other. Because it's a marriage between our physical and our virtual worlds, it allows us to collaborate in ways that were previously unimaginable. We can get into an immersive digital world from anywhere we are in the world, and it feels like we are in the same room same together, yeah. which is just exciting to me. And a good example of this is we are on the brink of a world where geographical locations are irrelevant in terms of where we are and how we collaborate with each other. Um, I think we got a taste of this with the pandemic. The distributed workforce kind of exploded as a necessary. And I just want to highlight that the tools that we use to do remote work are not a workplace. Zoom and Slack are not a workplace. And so we're seeing the, the explosion of all of these digital and virtual offices like Verbella and SoWork. Microsoft Azure is doing some really cool stuff. And these, these worlds not only allow us to collaborate more efficiently, automate processes, and enhance our decision making, it also brings back all of the human elements that were lost. We can have serendipitous conversations yeah. at the proverbial water cooler, yeah. or we can uh, run up to our boss and ask a quick question and get a quick answer instead of having to get in there and... and Catch and, their attention somehow. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, we had to set up a meeting, and yeah. now we have to have a Zoom call, and now right. we just wasted all of this time. A lot of that is, is wasted. And so this concept of RTO, a lot of leaders want to come back into the office, and understandably so, is because we want all of the rich human interactions that in we the get when we're in the same space. Yeah. And I'm saying the metaverse provides the best of both worlds. We can do both. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Josh, what are some of the benefits that, you're, that you see in, the, in this new way of interacting for both the employer and the employee, the, the worker? Yeah, great question. First and foremost, the employee-employer relationship has a lot of work to do. Right now, we are still running off of a contractual model. I, as the employer, pay you X amount of dollars, and you, as the employee, provide me Y amount of work. Of labor, yeah. And while that model worked in the industrial industry, it is extractive, and it, is, it doesn't allow people to really express themselves or, or really push into some really exciting ways to collaborate with, with companies. And so I, I believe that employee experience design is really important. Work is not a contract. It is a relationship, and we need to focus on creating great experiences for employees. Mm -hmm. However, beyond that horizon is the potential for Web3. Web3 technology has the power for us to disrupt current structures of work and create a new form or format of work where we can collaborate. An individual collaborates directly with a decentralized entity. And this is part of what we're writing about in our book, my co-author and I. You take an employer, and traditionally, they set the terms and conditions of employment. 
And this top-down model for employment doesn't work for a lot of employees right now, and that's where you see these massive numbers of disengagement. It's a, it's a generational thing, too. And are we yeah. ready for Gen Z to hit the workforce? who are digital natives, who are excited about AI, yeah. who are naturally gravitating to it. It, it. it causes us to think about the structure and have to find a new model. Now, Web3 technology is not a prerequisite for the metaverse. A lot of people kind of think it's the same thing. It's not. 3D interoperable worlds can exist independent of decentralization and vice versa. But when we saddle these two technologies together, we can create a new format of work that puts power back into the hands of the participant. They get greater ownership over the work that they're doing. They have more agency in the decision-making process, and they get that flexibility that they're demanding right now, where they can work how, when, and from wherever they are in the world. Yeah, so this becomes a, 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 situ a, a, a scenario that m employers are gonna have to be aware of what's happening at uh, what other companies are doing in order to compete for talent. Kim, you've been very patient. Uh, your, time, your time has come. Um, so. Can you tell us how you see the industrial metaverse and what's possible when you digitize operations? Yeah, uh, for sure. So, you know, when I think of the industrial metaverse, I really sort of think of AI and people working together uh, really to drive digital transformation for physical uh, operations. And, and I think what that means is, is a number of things. And, you know, I think at, at the grand scale, it's the ability to have uh, a model of your physical operation that you can use to make better decisions, to deliver better resilience, better agility for your organization, uh, whether that's you know to gain efficiency, to improve throughput, to get regulatory compliance, to be in a, in a better uh, a better place. I think change is a, a constant that that every organization has really had to feel very deeply over the last four years. Uh, four or five years, and and I think the ability to to cope with that change is ultimately you know the the value that the folks can get. Yeah, we can talk about a couple of examples, uh, places where you see transformation, you know, a potential for transformation. Yeah, uh, for sure. So I think you know there are a couple couple great examples. We have a a, a customer that we work with uh, in the food industry. Uh, they're one of the largest global bakeries uh, around the world. Uh, and you know they've they've used Azure and they've used our services uh, to essentially instrument the the the, the ovens the the uh, packing lines the the um, the entire production facility that they have so that they can start flowing data and to understand kind of what is the throughput like what's the yield like what are the temperatures like uh, and then get a view of that on a global scale across their entire organization so that they can really make sure that they're able to ensure consistency and quality from product, no matter where it's produced, uh, but also so that they can be thoughtful about as they're introducing a new product, as they're looking at supply chain uh, uh, ch challenges that might be coming down the pipeline, or even if they're looking at uh, things like uh, labor costs changing from one region to another, how do they make sure that they're able to really sustain uh, consistency in, in their business expectations and, and continue to drive uh, the gains that they're, that they're accountable for? Yeah, great. Those are those, that's a great example. Um, Josh, with so much going on, how do people, employers, employees, how do how does everybody prepare for this new world? Um, how do companies make sure that they're going to stay adaptable and embrace these new technologies in order that they can be good? good suppliers to their customers, good employers. You know, what, what do people here, quite likely employers, um, you know, certainly, certainly managers um, of, you know, large teams in, in many cases, what do we need to be thinking about and be preparing for? Yeah, it's, I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but it just feels like there's an influx of change in technologies. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> I just feel like the the only constant, especially in the workplace right now, is change. To yeah. sound cliche, but the key is to embrace a proactive and adaptable approach mm -hmm. and foster a culture of learning and innovation within the organization. Just be excited about these emerging technologies and, and what they mean. I mean, there are camps that we're seeing right now who paint this dystopian picture and individuals like some of the professionals we're hearing on stage right now who paint this vision of, well, look how we're using the technology today and look how it's improving our lives. And so mm -hmm. we usually take 
companies through five steps when we are talking about how do you adapt. The first is just adopt a learning mindset, which drives innovation and helps you remain competitive. Network and collaborate with industry experts, these individuals who are pushing the boundaries on what's possible right now. And Cohen is pushing the boundaries on what's oh, possible, yeah. and that's amazing to see. Um, stay in the know of technology trends. This can be as simple as setting up a Google alert for the industrial metaverse and seeing the feed come through. Or, or may I just suggest subscribe to MIT Technology Review? Oh, there you go. I mean, sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> shameless plug, which is necessary because there is some great information coming out of there. And you know what? If you guys get stronger into the TikTok game, you know, then we'll start seeing the, the Gen yeah, Z. Yeah, we fall. can have a sidebar on TikTok another time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and finally, just innovate, elaborate, and evaluate your results. Um, it's important to continue to remember that things are changing, so we need to reassess the relevance of metaverse technologies in our business strategies. Uh, be prepared for changing market dynamics, which seem to be changing on a monthly and weekly basis. And overall, just keep a structure of agility where you can adopt and adapt to these changing technologies, embrace them, and, and, and be ready to use them at a moment's notice. Cam, can you talk to us about collaboration? You know, there's been, there was a lot of conversation here about sort of firm collaboration across, yeah. on a platform. You know, Marshall was talking about that. But what about team collaboration, human being collaboration in the industrial metaverse? In, indeed. I, I think, you know, one of the things that uh, we see a lot of uh, with our customers is uh, bringing uh, OT stakeholders and IT stakeholders together uh, to work through uh, solving problems for a l larger organization. And, and you know, this is... Uh, a, a really interesting challenge for for a lot of organizations where you know each each group tends to have their own KPIs, their own metrics, their own things they're responsible for. IT is responsible for you know, keeping the network healthy, keeping things secure. Yeah. IT is responsible for that throughput, that production line, and um, and they can often feel like uh, a little bit ad adversarial. And I think that you know one of the the big opportunities we have through things like simulation, through things like being able to uh, flow data and share data in a, in a, in a, in a more uh, effective and, and, and collaborative way is you can, you can create environments where these goals are really more tightly aligned. Because at the end of the day, uh, you know, both are, are typically accountable for you know, driving that efficiency at the organizational level. They just have their, their, their roles. And I think that you know, the, the, in, the, the role of the industrial metaverse in, in helping bring those constituencies together is, is just really, uh, really high. Really powerful. Yeah. yeah. So, We've talked, you talked to Josh already a bit about culture. And of course, we had the pandemic and all the changes that you know, came about when people were working from home. Um, are we going to have some of that kind of, what's it going to be like when we see more movement towards the metaverse? Is it going to feel a bit like fits and starts, like we experienced it with the pandemic? I mean, that was obviously, you know, that was an external shock that we all experienced. So how do you envision it working? Yeah. the. The culture debate is so hot right now. Yeah. It is. It feels like a war between employers who want more transparency into the lives of their employees and have that structure in place to have a positive culture that makes sense to them. Whereas employees say, well, I prefer to work in a way that fits my lifestyle. I like to go pick up my kids at 3 p.m. I like to take a walk in the middle of the day. Or I want to work from Palmera. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, right. we're crushing it from 9 to 12 at right. night. So why do I have to come to a physical office? Yeah. And so the culture is, it's still something very, that I'm passionate about. We need to talk about culture at organizations and how to create a positive and productive culture. The question becomes, who owns the culture? Traditionally, it was employers mm -hmm. who is like a 1980s, 1990s Franklin Covey. We have standards, ideals, and values. We put it up in the break room. We have put our stake in the, in the ground, and this is our culture. Mm -hmm. But what we're missing is culture adoption. Just because you said this is your culture doesn't mean that it is. And so employees, are they a part of the decision-making process? Only one in 10 organizations are including employees in the process of deciding what the culture will be. And it's important to remember that it's a partnership. It's a collaboration now. It's not, I'm the boss and I get to tell you what to do. 
and it might feel that way in today's economy, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, but there is going to be a point where employees are going to prefer, prefer to work in the metaverse because it offers all of, it, it's a, a solvent to the pains that they're feeling about having to come back to the office, yeah. having to commute, having a specific nine to five. Um, and, and, and so back to the culture piece itself. This isn't a war of worlds. It should be a collaboration. It's so interesting because you know the the bosses are a, a generation removed from, in most cases, you know, C suite gets older and older, and then new employees in the in the in the company stay roughly the same age. You know, the youngest employees, and so the culture is shifting because, you know, when we were that age. Everyone came into the office, and you learned from the person sitting next to you, or you took, you walked, you watched the power dynamics play out in front of you, and the idea that we're now meant to embrace this new, you know, the shock of the of the pandemic brought this all to life, but bringing in a new technology like the industrial metaverse is going to take a lot of folks to kind of uh, go along on that thought journey, who are potentially, you know, for whom it's it's very alien. Yeah, and I I believe that the the change will be driven by the participant, the contributor, the employee, yep. if you will, because these are digital natives who have lived that way. I feel like my generation, we complied. We like, okay, we love all of this, but the workplace is this way, so this is just how we have to do. Mm. Whereas the younger generation has nine screens up and they're yeah. like playing video games and watching Netflix and getting their work done. And when you go into the office <laughs> and you say, sorry, like put that right. all away and just do task one, task two, right. task three, get this done, that's how work is. They see the lack of productivity, the lack of efficiency, the lack of collaboration, and they're not going to stand for it. And that's why I believe in the metaverse and the technologies that it will provide to make work more digital and more human. It's really, really interesting. So let's get a final thought from you, Cam. Big picture for us. What, what are the takeaways? How do you see this? You know, what's gonna, where are we going to be in three to five years from now, back in, the, in MIT Media Lab, having a conversation What's going to be uh, what's going to be the t you know what are the bullet points we're going to be most obsessed with? So yeah, it's, you know when I project out, I, I think a lot about there's a, a company that that I was talking with that's a manufacturing company in Southeast Asia, and and one of the challenges they're running into is that the cities where their factories are, or the places where their factories are, is not where people live anymore. Yeah. And increasingly, people have moved away. And it, it, you know, hearing Josh talk really, really kind of made me think a little bit about sort of the, the notion of remote work, uh, less for the knowledge worker and more for you know folks in operational settings and yeah. and and what that can be like. And and you know, the thing that 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 they're they're moving towards is this idea of a dark factory, where every there's not people there. It's all you know. There's automation. There's there's robotics. There's AI kind of managing things. And you know, people may come in once in a while to go fix something, but the, the place largely runs itself. And the machine operators are largely remote. They're all you know, working, you know, to your point, with the cell phone, with the tablet, or whatever else that's going on. And, and so it, it's, it's not hard to imagine you know, the capabilities that we're bringing, bringing along with things like generative AI, making it easier for people to work with more complex technology through ordinary language you know, interactions. Uh, to imagine a world where where that you know that remote work is has changed quite a bit as well, but also just the basic notion of how these operations uh, work has totally changed. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's this is this is fascinating. Thank you very much. I think you sparked a lot of thoughts for everyone here. Uh, so. Both Cam and Josh are going to be joining us for the reception after closing remarks. So engage with them for some actual human-to-human -human, um, collaboration and conversation. Thank you both very much.